Uh, welcome to Radix Facts. Today I'm going to go through the tuning of the Total G. I'm going to be using the Ray V and V. Uh, I'm going to be actually using the regular Radix blades. Uh, they're a little more sensitive than the Fly Bartis blades. They'll show a little more of the issues, so they're a good one here to help show you how to tune everything. Uh, I'm going to be using the GVU 2 for programming, but we're not likely to actually going to stop and show you, show me actually tuning every little thing. That'll take a little too long, but we'll talk you through all the setup. Okay, the first thing we're going to do in setting up the model in flying is to mechanically trim it for the pirouette compensation. In this image you can see that the auto pirouette is activated in the pirouette compensation. Now we just need to go and actually mechanically trim the model in a hover with the flight control off. Okay, to trim the helicopter for flat for pirouette compensation, I lift off the flight control off and I let go of the control. Drift into the right, so I need to turn it 90 degrees, let go of the control again and see it's going off and back into the right again. 90 degrees, let go of the control, it's going back into the right. Another 90 degrees, still going back into the right. This is all relative to the model, so we know the model itself is actually out of trim, whether it's windy or not. You can tell the model is out of trim, so I need to land and adjust it mechanically. Okay, now that we've mechanically trimmed it, I'm lifting it off, we're going to check the trim again. There's actually a little breeze, you can see the smoke moving. And as I let go of the control, you can see it going back, away from me and to my left. Turn it again, it's going away from me and to my left. Turn it again, away from me and to my left, slightly. So it, now it's moving relative to the wind as opposed to relative to the model. So now it is actually trimmed. And with the pirouette compensation on auto, it's ready for pirouettes. Okay, now we're going to look at the basic flight control game. You can see here I've got it set at about 56%. In flying, as I give control, you see it when I pop the control, it oscillates like a tiny bit, but not much, and then stop. Uh, on elevator, as I, as I give the elevator, it'll wag as I pump it hard, but it really won't really sit there and oscillate. It stops pretty quickly. Okay, now I've got the gain intentionally set too high. It's about 75% gain. And as I punch the ailerons, you can see it starts to oscillate a little bit. Uh, another place you'll notice too high gain is if you do tick tocks or roll flips. You'll see it actually kind of oscillates through the flips. Uh, this also, if you at this high gain, if I went and fast forward plot, it likely oscillate on aileron. And as I punch the elevator, you can see it continue to oscillate on elevator. The high gain would also show up as you do tick tocks or elevator flips. It would tend to oscillate. So I tend to keep my flight control gain around 55 to 60 percent, usually 10 to 15 units below where it'll oscillate. Okay, next we're going to show you the effective response match. In this case, I'm running with response match around 50, which is about right for this model. As I do TikToks, the stops on the TikToks stop about right. So this means the response match is set properly for TikTok. Now with the response match in the background settings, I've turned the elevator response match down to 39. And as I sit and do TikToks on each end, you'll see the elevator bounce on the, the tail button. You see it bounce especially when I go to the inverted section. That means the response match is too low, it's bouncing. If I turn it up, it'll tend to get rid of the bounce. Now if it sticks on each end, that means the response match is too high. Okay, now we're gonna work on the stops in the flight tuning advanced section. They're sitting at the default of 33. And as I do stationary flips, as I go inverted and stop after the flips, it's a solid stop, go forward and back. You have to do multiple flips at least three, and when you go to the stop after multiples, that's what the stop is setting. So that was the elevator, now we're doing the aileron. After multiple flips, when it goes to the stop, that's the good stop. Okay, now we're gonna set the stops at a low number of 27 and see how it affects the flips. As I do an elevator flip, you'll see it actually bounce back on the stop. And you'll see the same thing a minute on the aileron flip also, you get a bounce back. Now if I turn the stop up too much, you'll actually see a coast and kind of a non-defined stop on the stop. Okay, now I want to explain roll speeds and flip speeds uh, relative to travel adjusting your radio. The roll speed and flip speed is really the speed with which it tick tocks. 
how fast can you be moving around the center like a TikTok. Also, as you turn a roll speed and flip speed up, it gives it more of the fly bar feel. Whereas full flip rate is actually the travel adjust in your transmitter or the limits you set in the total G when you're setting your control limit. Okay, now in this one I've turned down the roll speed, which means as I do TikTok like this, this is as fast as I can do the TikTok. It doesn't affect the full roll rate, but right around the center I cannot TikTok as fast. If I had turned it up, it would TikTok really fast. Okay, now I've gone over all the basics of the flight tuning of the model. I, it seems to go very quick because there's not that much to set. Uh, a lot of little tuning things off the default, but that's about it. Uh, the machine you see flying here is actually set at all defaults as it comes in the total G. I mean, it generally flies pretty well there. Uh, the main thing I would suggest with the tuning, move maybe five, six units at most off of what the defaults are. That should be about right for most models. If you have to go a lot further than that, there may be something else off, like your limit sets or something else in geometry. Uh, defaults ought to be pretty close to correct. Other than that, I just run my limits about plus or minus 11 degrees. My transmitter travels around 95 to 100. Gains around 55%, 60, and my RPM about 2,000 RPM. Other than that, it's ready to go.